Just to start, I'd love to have uh, both of you introduce yourselves and your roles. I'm Dan Norton. I'm the creative director of Filament Games. And Filament Games is a design and development studio in uh, Madison, Wisconsin that is 100% dedicated to creating learning games. I'm Jim G. I'm a professor at Arizona State University and I'm very interested in games for learning, but in particular, um, I'm interested in uh, problem-based learning that games do well. Thinking about problem-based learning, how do you, uh, it, it almost feels like a leading question, but just thinking about games and problem-based learning. I, I think games just are problem sets with uh, goal, clear goals and a win state, right? And if you think about it, if you want uh, people to learn through problem solving, so they can actually solve a problem, not just write down a bunch of inane answers. Mm -hmm. We do know from a lot of research what will create good problem solving. And the way to do that well is done in games. How you order the problems the person sees is very crucial, right? You need early on to see problems that are very generative, that you can solve, but that you, know, you solve them in a way that is not a garden path. It'll keep working and you can keep adding to it. Level design takes care of that, right? All game designers know that the level is creating a problem that will be generative for the next one, then it's going to get you to practice it till you're sick of it, and then it's going to have a boss that says you're not as good as you thought, you better think about this again, and you better get ready for the harder problems to come. I, I returned to Zelda as a series for that, as being just a really well-structured uh, chain of problems. At a certain point, you acquire a new tool, a boomerang or mm -hmm. uh, a grappling hook, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you're asked to uh, reiterate on the same space uh, but interpret it with a new tool. And Portal's great that way because it's really saying this tool will let you see the world sort of the way a physicist sees the world. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that should be a, a, a vision statement for education. The education should be giving people new tools to see new possibilities in their world. But I think there's a very deep analogy between a person designing a game and a person designing learning for somebody. Mm. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. a, a when a, a good teacher is designing learning and a lot of it is, is like level design. So I actually see what teachers do and game designers do as being in the same family. Uh, and that's why they can share tools. I'm curious to know, like I'm assuming uh, you came to the idea of learning in games as a player. Some, I did. Like, what, what was that moment where you're like, wait a sec. The, the moment was connection. when I bought my first, you know, commercial adult game. I was first of all floored by how hard it was. You know, and long and complex. And, uh, and I also saw that the um, theory of intelligence that games have is not the same theory of intelligence baby boomers have. Baby boomers, I think, believe smart people are the ones that are most fast and efficient to their goals, right? The more efficient you are, the speedier you are. The games say, nope, explore everything, rethink your goals, think laterally, not just linearly. And it dawned on me that view of intelligence in a world full of dangerous, complex systems is a lot better than rush right to your goal. Uh, don't rethink it, just you know, be as efficient as possible. The very principles about learning that I know from research in cognitive science are all in this game. So then the paradox hits, why are cutting edge principles of learning in our commercial game products but not in our schools? Like are there any common misconceptions you see with people around like games and learning? One large one is, uh, and Eric did a great job touching on this, is that uh, learning games, if the mechanics are designed to express your learning objectives, the assessment becomes part of the game cycle itself. And mm -hmm. you can have really rich and meaningful tracking of the data inside mm -hmm. a game that says a lot of things about what you've learned that are way more relevant than a test. As Dan is saying, good level design means you don't finish a game without having mastered it, right? You, you, right it, it's right. already its own test. Why can't we do that with algebra? Why, why do I need some t test maker in Illinois to tell me that the kid learned algebra, why can't I design it so well that you don't you don't finish it without knowing algebra? I think that this idea that assessment stands outside the learning is a very old-fashioned idea, and I personally think that games and game-like learning, where you integrate assessment and learning, will put the testing industry just out of business. If we're going to have this conversation five years from now, mm -hmm. what would you fear that we'd be talking about? What would you hope that we'd be talking about? And what do you actually think we'd be talking about? I would be terrified that we would be talking about the exact same problems. Right. I would love to have uh, a lot of the misconceptions about what good learning games are to be settled, done. I'd love to be talking about a whole new tier of trying to understand how to improve the field and, and what's mm -hmm. next in front of us. Yeah, my fear is that we, we're going to use uh, games and other media to essentially control and dupe people. 
to put them into micro communities mm -hmm. where we customize everything oh, to them. And I think this technology can be used just to increase our consumerism and our um, only dealing with people we know and like. I would love to see that we keep arguing about what is equity, what is justice, what is society, what is the public sphere along with this because that's what lead to me what's at stake.